Greetings, I am Gerg, and today I'm going to be playing Hexen Beyond Heretic, which is a dark fantasy first-person shooter developed by Raven Software and published by Hint Software. The objective of this game is to make it through a series of hubs with various inane puzzles while fighting off hordes of nasty minions in order to defeat the antagonist Korax. We then need to take control of a powerful artifact known as the Chaos Sphere, which is said to have the power to make and unmake worlds. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be a max difficulty playthrough, and I'm going to be playing with the Cleric. The Cleric is not my favorite class at all. In fact, I really don't care for it very much. As you can see, this is the prologue. The first level is going to be fairly short. And I'll get started. If I have anything to say, then I'll just do it while I'm playing. Now with the cleric, you want to especially avoid getting surrounded. Because you really have no way to stun the enemies or prevent them from doing damage besides running. Until you get your second weapon, you're, you are probably one of the weakest classes in every situation. When you step on this, it's going to bring out a whole bunch of Ettons. And by the way, these are Ettons. You're going to see a lot of these in the game. And they're not incredibly dangerous unless you let them surround you. And since this is max difficulty, one of the things you will notice, if you already didn't, is that the monsters are a lot faster. It's just like Nightmare Mode on Doom, with the exception that they're, the monsters don't respawn. There are also fewer items, um, which makes it harder to stay alive, especially later on. So you have to be really conservative on your use of uh, consumables in this game, which you're going to probably need, to be honest. Now this room, you want to avoid rushing headlong into it, because you're going to get surrounded. I know it was a habit of mine for a long time, and... I usually am at the end of my life <laughs> by the time I'm finished. Now the hitbox in this game, if you pass, ah, is uh, fairly small, so you can actually avoid a lot of their attacks up close if you just move a little bit to the side. Which is something that we're going to absolutely need with playing the cleric before we get our next weapon. Now that back right there was a key and it opens up the first door. I mean, I don't know. It's a green, the green key <laughs> for this level. So if you'd like a little bit of armor, it helps out a little bit, but, uh, which actually I'm surprised. Armor is fairly lacking in this game. There's really not a lot of it, and 
And uh, to make matters worse, unless you play a fighter, you don't really get the full benefit of wearing armor. Something I forgot to mention. If you're playing a mage, when you first get in here, you can actually shoot that bell. Which, we're going to have to go up to the bell and hit the bell in order to progress to the next area. It saves a little bit of time, and, but we're not playing a mage, so we don't get that advantage. going to be an end in here. Alright. Ouch. I was trying to avoid that. Now there's no point in fighting all these monsters out here. There are no items. Unless you're just OCD and want to be a completionist, I wouldn't bother. And here we go. Let's get out of here because they're going to come and uh, find us. And this is the first hub in Hex. Mortal, are you ready to die? It's known as the Seven Portals. And uh, from what I understand, most people never make it past this because it's very confusing. So the puzzles in this game really don't have a lot of logic behind them. So solving them can take just a lot of trial and error. It's probably the most frustrating thing about this game. first area, because I'm going to be coming back here quite a bit. Okay. Alright. A couple of enemies back here. I'll just take them out now. Yes. Oh, and uh, I was wrong earlier when I had said that the cleric was helpless without another weapon. The fleshettes, in my opinion, are the best with the cleric. They drop a little glass cloud. Gas cloud. Chaos serpents are not something you want to fight in melee range. Thank you. 
first area we're going to be going to is the Guardian of Ice. We won't be there very long, but we will end up having to go back. want to step on any of these unless they have this sword thing on the ground because they'll crush you. Now two more doors should have opened on either side and uh, one leads to the Guardian of Steel and the other one leads to the Guardian of Fire. Let's go ahead and go in here. I want to get my second weapon as quickly as possible because using this mace really sucks. And it uh, will be in here. Alright, here is the Guardian of Steel. And I need to avoid getting surrounded. Okay. You can go either direction, and on the corner there's a switch. And I'll show you what that switch does. A lot of people get really confused. I know I did.
awesome. Look at that. It's our first weapon. Well, besides the one we started with. The Serpent Staff, is, uh, so this is called, has two functions. The first function is that it's a ranged weapon. It doesn't do a lot of damage. Second function is it leeches life from the enemies when used up close. So that helps make up for the fact that it's uh, kind of lackluster otherwise. Okay. The next thing we need to do is that there's a strange way that they set up this map. This can actually lead to two different areas. And that switch that we pulled back there makes it so one area is down here the other switch is the other area. You have to pull both switches in order to complete the three-part puzzle. Actually, this weapon actually makes Edens pretty useful because you can use them to refill your health. <laughs> Alright, so we pull this switch just like what we did on the other side. This door now leads to a different area. As you can see, the same bodies, but this is blocked off. This is where we went before. One third of the puzzle. This is a little deceiving because there's, only, there's not three parts to the whole puzzle. It doesn't really solve anything really, it just opens up a door. We're finished here, we'll end up having come back later. Let's grab that. Okay, so we've completed two parts of the puzzle and the Guardian of Steel. The next area we have to go to is the Guardian of Fire.
it's not as dangerous as it looks. Third part, right there. But before we leave, there's one more thing we want to do. So, you have to run, because if you walk, or if you're very slow, the floor here will collapse. Now we want to jump back here. There's a switch. You don't want to fall, because you will die. <laughs> My frame rate, by the way, uh, recording, is not all that great. I think I'm probably at about 20 frames per second right now. I'm on a low-end machine. It makes some of those jumps pretty hard. So now we've got the flame mask, as you can see. I've got it selected down there. We're going to need that later, so we can leave here. And uh, since we flipped all switches, all three of those switches, this door across here has opened. Shit. Fantastic. Now up ahead we have Wendigos. Those are probably one of the scariest enemies in this game, but they only show up in a couple of different levels. And for some reason, right at the start of the game, there's a bunch of them. light spots here are pillars that will rise to the ceiling and crush you, so you want to be careful about stepping on these. If you do, make sure you step off as quickly as possible. Okay, that gives us a little bit of cover, because we're going to have to fight these. There 
are more Wendigos here. What the hell? That's cheap. <laughs> Ended up going into the ground. Okay. Here we go. The other side of the Guardian of Ice. Okay, this is the second part of the Guardian of Ice. Now we have to pull these switches, but when we do, there's going to be an ambush. Forget about that. <laughs> Okay, now we're back to where we were before, if you remember this. There are two more swords on the ground here. This is where the flame mass goes. and there is the flame key. More windigos.
Alright, we just made it out. Fantastic. Okay. Next up, we need to get rid of these keys. And if you've noticed, the other side has opened. We're back in the Guardian of Steel, except we're on, we are on the other side. It's hard to tell, but if you'll notice, there's monsters here, and we kill everything on the other side. That door is a little bit different than what we saw before. If you notice, it has a keyhole. That's what we need the steel key for, and we picked that up earlier. That's gonna work now.
<laughs> Which way did I go? Uh, come from? I went and killed everything. And now I don't have a clue. Let's just... Let's go back down here. Yep, that, that's right. No, I flipped the wrong one. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, let's do this again. Alright, we are finished with the Guardian of Steel, and I am not coming back here. Well, maybe. <laughs> I'm debating on whether to do the secret area in uh, the first hub. There's really no benefit to doing it. It's kind of a pain in the ass to begin. But, I don't know, I'll think about it. It depends on how I feel towards the end of this hub, because I really don't like this hub very much. That's steel. We need to go into fire. And for fire, it doesn't matter which end you go into. But I'll go into this one anyway. So we need to clear this out. Here we go. I'm gonna run out of mana here. <laughs> Bad time.
least we got lots of health. Here's our switch. A little health back from him. Here's a shortcut. You know, it took me a long time to figure that out. I always ran back. And you can get back through the sides. But you have to run through all the enemies that you missed. And there's really nothing left to pick up. Okay, we've got all of the switches on, and we're about ready to wrap this level up. I decided not to do the secret area here, but just so you know, these switches open it up and the Guardian of Ice. There's two total, one on each side. As you can see, the message right there. This door is open.
these are nice wings. Uh, they allow you to fly. I would keep them, but you lose them at the end of each hub, so there's no reason to uh, not use them now. I think I'm just going to get out of here. <laughs> right. Fantastic.